Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're addressing a common misconception within the car community that says that threshold braking is better than ABS braking. And this is nonsense, so in this video we're going to explain why. Okay, so before we get into threshold braking versus ABS, there's some background theory that we need to understand surrounding slip. So we're looking here at a graph of slip on the bottom, and then our y-axis is essentially our grip. Now slip as a percentage is essentially comparing your tire speed versus your vehicle speed as a ratio. So if you write it out as an equation, slip percentage equals the velocity of your car minus the velocity of your tire divided by the velocity of your car. So simple example, if you have a car traveling at 60 miles per hour and that rear wheel is spinning such that the outside of that tire is traveling at 60 miles per hour, well then you have 60 minus 60 which gives you zero, which means you have zero percent slip. There is no relative motion uh, there because the car speed and the tire speed are matched. You have no tire slip, you're neither accelerating nor decelerating, you're simply coasting along. Well what about the opposite? Say your wheel is completely locked up, so your car velocity is 60 minus zero divided by 60. That that gives you 100%. So then you're at 100% slip if your tire is locked up. So that's what slip percentage is on a scale from zero to 100%. Now there's an important distinction here because there is a certain point during this percentage of slip where you have the ideal frictional coefficient, meaning at that point you are able to slow your car down the quickest. And so that's what we're looking at here. We're basically looking at our frictional coefficient and as we start to slip that tire and get onto that brake pedal and slow the car down, eventually we reach a point at which we have maximized grip based on the slip on the tire and the ground. Now, if we keep applying more brake pressure, we're gonna start to lose grip and fall into this unstable region where then the tire wants to lock up. And so as that wheel starts to lock up, we lose grip as you can see here, and so our stopping distance increases. So let's do an example using this tire's slip versus grip uh, profile here. So if we were to keep this braking within the sweet spot right there at you know about 20% slip in the case of this tire where we have our ideal amount of grip, if we were to slow down from 60 miles per hour to zero and we were able to perfectly keep it within that range, then we would stop in about 120 feet. Now if we slam the brakes, we don't have ABS and it just locks up the tire and it goes over to point eight as our coefficient of grip rather than 1.0, well now our braking distance is 150 feet. So we've added 30 feet in braking distance just because we weren't able to keep it within that sweet spot. Now this leads us to threshold braking. So threshold braking is when you perfectly maintain that maximum level of grip and you're stopping that maximum level of slip which results in the perfect braking distance. In this case it would be 120 feet. Now this is virtually impossible to do. We'll get into the reasons why, uh, but even the best drivers out there, if you look at any form of motorsport that doesn't have ABS, which is, you know, a lot of the popular ones, they don't have ABS and you will see wheels locking up all the time because even the world's best drivers cannot do this perfectly. And so they lock up those wheels and you see a bunch of smoke as they slide along. So in this scenario, pretty much any driver out there is going to fall somewhere between these two values here, because if you just slam it and lock up, that's where you end up. And if you do it perfectly, that's where you end up. So what ABS does is it takes everybody out there and it brings them to near perfect numbers. So what is the goal of ABS? Well, the goal of ABS is to continue to allow you to have steering, to provide you with stability, and to decrease your stopping distance. So it does this, you have sensors at every single wheel, modern ABS systems, you'll have four wheel sensors, You'll have four separate channels, and so you can modulate your brake pressure at each individual tire based on the input from that wheel sensor and knowing what its speed is relative to your vehicle speed. So what ABS is doing is attempting to maintain your tire slip in that perfect little range so that you have the perfect stopping distance. I think a common misconception people think about ABS is that it's this on off switch and you're bouncing from 0% slip and it just releases the brake pedal uh, to full lockup and it completely squeezes it and it bounces between those. That's not what it's doing. It's not bouncing from here to here and back.
perfect. It's bouncing in this tiny little range right here to maintain that perfect stopping distance. So it's very precise in how it's doing it, and it's doing it at every single individual tire. So think about it, at each tire, you have changing surface conditions, right? You have different levels of grip. You have different tire temperatures. That provides different levels of grip. You have different tire pressures. Each tire will have different wear. You will have different suspension positions at each wheel. You'll have different loading at each wheel. You'll have different alignments. All right, I think you get it. The point is that each wheel, there will be different levels of grip and ABS can account for this while you cannot. Now, it's worth mentioning that not all systems are the same, right? So if you go back to older cars, you could have vehicles with fewer sensors, fewer channels, meaning you couldn't adjust at every individual tire. Uh, but I looked at studies as far back as the early 2000s, and even then, ABS systems were outperforming humans. Okay, so let's look at some simple examples here. So we're looking at distance traveled versus how much grip do we have. So we're saying that we're gonna slam the brakes on this surface, and that surface, as you go along it, its level of grip is something like this. There's some slight variations in that grip. So if you have ABS and you slam on those brakes, it's immediately gonna go find out, it's gonna go slightly past how much grip you have. Up, oh, the wheel is starting to lock up. I'm exceeding this range right here. I need to go back, so it lets off, and then it adjusts and it remains very close to this line, if not just beneath it, throughout its duration of trying to slow that car down, and you get what is nearly a perfect stopping distance. Now, if you're a human, uh, we have these other three traces. So let's say one of th three things is to happen. First, you apply too much brake pressure, so you overshoot it. Well, now you have to react, and then you let off, and then you come back down. Now you're not applying enough pressure, then you apply a little bit more pressure, you start to get it right. Oops, you go over again, it starts to slide, and then you come back down. You're not gonna be as good as ABS. But let's just say, for example, you were. Let's say you nailed it. Well, you nail it, you get it perfect, then your surface level grip slightly changes, and now you're no longer perfect, so then you overshoot it, so then you have to let off and react to it and keep trying to get it right. Again, ABS is gonna do this so much faster than you, so you lose in that scenario. So, okay, what if I never activate ABS? Well, you go in here and you think you're a genius because the whole time you never went into ABS and you're like, look, I nailed it. I got the perfect stopping distance. Well, you were leaving a ton on on the table there. So if you never dip into that, you're not gonna realize how much actual grip you have. So it may feel like, oh, I stopped really well, but really you left a lot of extra grip there on the table, looking at this last one in pink here. Okay, so why do I say it's virtually impossible for you as a driver to beat ABS using threshold braking? Well, first of all, you can't beat a four channel system. It's able to look at each individual tire and brake them each individually. You are not, you get one brake pedal. So you're just not gonna beat that, plain and simple. Next, you don't know what the friction of the road is. You don't know, you're looking at it, you can see it, but you have no idea what the grip is. You have to press the brake pedal and you have to make some assumption. So if you lock up, well, you lose. ABS one. If you don't lock up, then that means you were probably leaving something on the table because you didn't get into that unstable region. So you're somewhere over here thinking, okay, I found the perfect spot. But in reality, you're leaving some braking on the table. So if you don't lock up, you also lose. It's just an impossible situation to pretty much win. Also, it comes down to reaction time. So modern ABS systems, I've seen studies saying that they can activate, you know, 15 cycles within a second. If you think about uh, the average human reaction time, it's something like a quarter of a second. If you think about the best human reaction time, it's something like 120 milliseconds. So within those 120 milliseconds that it took you to realize that you started to lock up that tire and now you have to react, within those 120 milliseconds, ABS has already gone through two cycles of adjusting pressure. So it's insane to think that you're gonna beat that when you can't react as quickly as ABS can. And I I've seen estimates saying, you know, much higher uh, cycles than 15. So a human simply cannot win. And so then you'll see people say, well, okay, if you are going to use ABS, the right way to do it is get into the ABS and then just back off slightly. And it's like, well, two points here. First of all, that means you're reliant upon ABS, a superior technology, to inform you of when you have reached the tire's limit of grip. And second of all, if you start backing off of that, you don't know how much you've actually backed off, right? So you're gonna start pulling yourself back down this curve and then again, leaving grip on the table if you start to back off of ABS. 
ABS is finding the sweet spot. It's finding the perfect spot to slow down and then you're saying, no, I know better. It's crazy. Now, another thing I want to mention is brake bias. So in racing cars, for example, you can adjust your brake bias front to rear so that you have more braking go to the front or more braking go to the rear, any variation in between. And so what this does is it allows you to maximize your braking uh, using a system that doesn't have ABS, right? So let's say you have a car that has a static weight distribution of 50-50. And when you slam on the brakes at the maximum amount of you know braking that the car can allow, your weight distribution shifts so that your loading is now split 70-30. 70% of the load is on the front tires, 30% of your vehicle's load is on the rear tires. So you would set up your braking bias so that you have 70% of the braking force going to the front and 30% of the braking going to the rear. Great, that allows you for that really close to perfect stop, right? But then what happens if you're the driving scenario of what you're driving on changes? Well, you would have to adjust your brake bias uh, because let's say, for example, this on dry pavement, yes, that 70-30 split works great. But let's say you're braking on ice where you don't have as much grip. So when you slam on the brakes, you don't have as much weight transfer go to the front. So if you don't have that loading at 70-30 and say you're on ice and you hit the brakes and now your loading is 55-45, but your brake bias is 70-30, well, it means you're braking the front too much. So you're gonna lock up the fronts and you're not gonna provide enough pressure to the rears, meaning your rears could do more braking and your fronts are gonna do worse because they're locked up. So this is just another further complication that ABS can get rid of completely because it'll look at each individual tire versus you as a driver, you can't. You can adjust this, race cars adjust this to get as close as they can, and they're constantly adjusting it throughout the race because things like fuel load is changing, tire grip is changing as tires wear, so they're adjusting that brake bias. But you cannot win against ABS. It does this without even thinking about it. Now, does ABS have flaws? Yes, it absolutely does. So let's take a look at some different scenarios. And we're looking at the same graph that we have over here, but for just different conditions. So here in red, we have a dry road. Uh, same over here, we've got a dry road here in red, our slip percentage versus our grip percentage. Now you'll notice that a dry road and a wet road and ice all have this similar shape where you reach a peak and then as that tire starts to slide, you lose grip. However, for gravel and for unpacked snow, you can see the maximum amount of grip is actually achieved when that tire is fully locked up. So what's going on there? Well, for example, on a gravel road, if you lock up that tire, then you start to accumulate gravel in front of the tire. Same with unpacked snow. You start to accumulate a bunch of snow in front of that tire and all of that helps to slow down the vehicle. So if you lock those tires, you actually get your best braking distance. And then the ABS system will say, hey, I don't want to allow that. I want to allow make sure that the wheels are always rotating so that we can maintain steering control and we optimize our stopping distance. Well, in certain scenarios, gravel, unpacked snow, you're actually going to increase your braking distance by using ABS. Now, we have adjustments for this, right? So different cars out there will have modes, uh, like sand mode, for example, where it can adjust uh, how much is it going to you know, have ABS intervene versus just when it knows you're driving on the road. So you can have different modes to help adjust for this, but it is worth pointing out that ABS uh, isn't going to help you in a scenario like gravel if you're trying to maximize stopping distance. Now, two points worth mentioning here. Uh, if it's an older system, you might be able to do better than ABS. Say it's an old truck uh, from 1970, uh, maybe you can do better. But a modern system, you're not gonna beat. Uh, the other thing is, maybe there's a modern system out there that you can beat. And what is going on in that scenario? Well, in that scenario, that modern system, what it is doing is it is sacrificing your braking distance for something else, probably in the name of steering or stability, basically to not have something swing around on you. It might leave a little bit of braking on the table on the rear wheel so that it doesn't slide out. But realistically, modern cars can adjust for this. They can see yaw, they can see any steering inputs, and so they can adjust the brakes to make sure the car remains stable and has the perfect stopping distance. So truly, in a modern system, you're not gonna beat it. Uh, and if there is some rare exception out there, uh, I would be betting that that is the reason for why. Uh, but I don't think you're gonna beat anything. Now, if for some reason you're still unconvinced, I found three separate studies performing testing, each about a decade apart, starting with the year 2000. Quote, compared with conventional braking systems, ABS results in shorter braking distances, as much as 30 meters at 90 kilometers per hour. 
From 2010, a study looking at ABS on motorcycles, quote, adding anti-lock control to a standard braking system increases deceleration rate. And from 2018, a study found that on a motorcycle, the race mode ABS configuration, quote, produced the highest average decelerations and shortest stopping distances compared to not using ABS. Okay, now one final point. All of these studies, they do a bunch of runs, right? And they look at the best examples of these many, many runs and they say, look, if you look at the best of what a person can do versus the best of what ABS can do, ABS wins. In the real world, you don't have that luxury, right? You get one chance. You press that brake pedal once in an emergency situation or maybe you're track driving around that corner, you get one chance, right? And so are you going to rely on yourself or ABS? ABS is going to win every single time. It's so much more consistent and it does it better. So it's like, it's crazy to argue between the two. Uh, also, if you look at racing, why is ABS not allowed in Formula One uh, and IndyCar and NASCAR, things like that? It's because it's supposed to be a spectacle. We're not comparing how well can a computer slow down a vehicle. We're comparing how well can a person slow down that vehicle without that assistance. Uh, if they were to put ABS into a Formula One car, oh, it's gonna help out tremendously, especially in scenarios like where you have rain and you have all these differing levels of grip on the track. Uh, if you look at drivers as they're coming into the pit lane, uh, that's a corner they're not performing a bunch of times, right? So they don't know exactly what that grip is. So you'll often see them locking up as they come into the pit lane. That's losing time. They don't wanna be locking up, right? But in that scenario, they don't know exactly what the grip is. They're finding it. Sometimes they cross it uh, because they're unfamiliar with that corner. People will not be perfect at threshold braking. It's just simple fact. ABS will get as close as we can design cars currently today to do it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you so much for watching.